Okay. Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, when we set up yesterday, our idea was to hopefully access an API, like a Coda API that would actually propagate the data, the actual data. Um, but it didn't take us very long to find out that the only API that's currently uh, available is the catalog API that the other guys uh, used so cleverly. Um, but that wasn't quite what we wanted to do because basically, maybe we should introduce ourselves. My name is Konstantin, that's my friend and colleague Ludwig, and we're both working for Tableau Software. And the thing with Tableau Software is we can read many, many data formats, but we can read NetCDF files. But we really wanted to get the NetCDF data into Tableau, so we figured, okay, how can we do that? What, our first idea was to just like use an API and suck in the data online. Um, that didn't work. So then we thought, okay, why not just write a like general wrapper that takes a NetCDF file and puts it into a relational format. Any relational format could be a CSV file. In the end, we decided for uh, Postgres, um, just because we like Postgres. And, uh, and that's basically what we did. So we basically wrote a little tool that, and, and we, we started out in Python, but then we had some problems installing the NetCDF 4 uh, package, I think it is, on Windows. Yeah, you're laughing, you know, I'll pay. So we just gave up and set for R, which we like better anyways. Um, so yeah, basically we wrote a little tool in R. Um, and what this tool basically does is, and we actually wrote a little nice, uh, nice little command line like uh, structure around it. So there's no GUI or anything, it's just a command line tool because we're hackers, right? So, but at least it has some help and it has some, some error uh, <coughs> attachments, so you can't really break it heavily, but you can break it if you want to. Um, and what it basically does is it reads in a NetCDF file, which is already local, like probably would be a good idea to maybe somehow couple it with the, with the other guy's tool to like look for it online and also download it as part of the tool. But currently you need it offline, either in a folder or it can also be zipped up. It, it uh, picks that up itself. Um, and then it looks at the, at the actual data inside. So first we look at the, uh, the geocodes and we figure out where on the globe that is. And then we pump in all the attributes, like in all the other uh, NC files in this uh, NetCDF containers. And then we just do some more magic, and we basically write it out to Postgres. And that was actually pretty, pretty nice. It, it's not really fast. Um, we didn't optimize it a lot because we didn't have much time. It takes about 20 minutes, I would say, or maybe even a bit longer per NetCDF file. Um, but the results are pretty nice, and I think um, like I, I can't really, I could show you an action, but it's pretty boring. It's just like things appearing on the command line. And um, you can actually, if you want to, you can. And we also published it up on on GitHub, um, so you can have a look at that, download it, fork, uh, send me a pull request, and then make it even better. Um, but I think we can show you some of the results that came out of it. And he also had one more idea that we tried to implement, which didn't work out in the end. All right, it's be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so um, as we already said, our ultimate goal is eventually to put it into Tableau. So um, we were quite happy since we already succeeded yesterday evening to have actually something visible in Tableau. And we're quite happy about this since at the end it's for, like, like we are all kind of geeky and we, we know how to get the, the hands on such data. Uh, but if you imagine like big parts of the population, they maybe have access to Tableau, they understand Tableau. So we try to make it easy for them. Um, and they actually, with this script that they can execute, they can achieve seeing some data. It does render pretty slow, just because we are plotting points, so it's like, uh, I think, 19 million points right now on the plot. Um, we did, within our script, also some optimization on this one, so if you download the NetCDF files, uh, we put them all together in different columns within the relational database. So you do get a lot of empty space, which is just like null values. And these null values are still taking up A space and B are intensive to compute. So we, we have a little pivoting and transformation algorithm inside, which is just cutting it all up, putting out the um, NA values or null values and uh, making like a long form table out of it. Um, so you are able eventually within one file to have all different layers. So just for example, we have now uh, here, let's see, uh, once the, the, the picture before was altitude, this one is the chlorophyll data, 
uh, around Spain. Um, and the, the last project we tackled, what Constantine was talking about, is um, we got a hint that it would be really nice to export this NetCD files in GeoTIFF. Um, we tried this one, it does work up to a certain point, but we still have problems with uh, doing the projection right. Um, but we are on the right track, so we know where the problem is. We just don't know how to solve it yet. But this would be something we could just progress on in the future. So you can, because the, the thing is, like nobody really knows which projection apparently the data is in when it comes from the satellite, or at least after the pre-processing, what projection it is in. The funny thing is, if you process it in R and just write it out to the database, as you can see, it's perfect. It matches exactly with, the, with no reprojection, nothing. Um, but once we started making GeoTIFF out of it, which involves creating a raster from the grid, something went wrong. So it was always a bit shifted and tilted. So, but Ludwig's working on it, so it might be in the tool. You can already, from the tool, you can export the GeoTIFF. It's just yeah, we have an example. So, uh, if you do it locally, this is now in, in QGIS. So this is the GeoTIFF. Um, it's actually one uh, picture of further, so you can even, I think, the, who works on chlorophyll sees the nice swirl. <laughs> Uh, so it is intuitive, but it's just a local um, coordinate system. So. And they're kind of like inconsistencies. You know, sometimes they are right projected, sometimes they are not. And you have them like in Antarctica, sometimes you have them in South Africa, sometimes in Spain. <laughs> Which is actually Spain, so you have here Spain, uh, mainland, and then you have Mallorca, Menorca, Menorca, Mallorca, this way. And the Gibraltar. I'm here.